This used to be the only way to make a Domino's pizza. About a dozen workers touched every ball of dough rolling down the production line. But now, in Domino's brand new $50 million facility in Indiana, machines measure, move, and stack pizza dough. And more and more, workers touch buttons instead of flour. You just have to kind of watch it, make sure it's doing the right things. All this comes after years of stiff competition from other pizza chains and a struggle to find enough workers, even in the store. Domino's in particular was having a hard time fulfilling these roles that are not super high paying and are pretty strenuous to work. And as sales spike for pizza's biggest holiday, those machines will be put to the test. It's all hands on deck. Super Bowl is one of the, you know, top three busiest days for Domino's Pizza. So how does the world's biggest pizza chain balance automation with a human touch? And what does all this mean for the future of fast food? Each year, Domino's slings out about a billion pizzas globally. They have been one of the most successful public companies since around 2009, 2010. The company can keep pizza cheap because it controls its entire supply chain, from dough making to delivery. In the U.S., it all depends on bustling production and distribution centers. Back in 2018, we filmed at an older center in Connecticut with a more manual dough process. There, it took hours longer to make and chill pizza dough than at Domino's newest and heavily automated Indiana Center. Now we have robots, so it's more efficient, it's more consistent. This 110,000 square foot location opened in October 2022 and reportedly cost the company $50 million. We're constantly moving from the second that we start, we're go, go, go. While some centers still measure ingredients by hand, at the new ones, mixing machines pump in flour, water, oil, salt, and sugar directly from storage. And then we have a secret recipe, a uh, pre-packaged recipe. I cannot tell you what's in our top secret ingredient because we wouldn't be able to let you go out of here. The new facility can churn out 50 batches of dough a day. That's 88,000 uh, pizzas for our customers daily. Dough has a shelf life to it and we don't, we don't freeze it. We constantly have to make it, so it's, it's non-stop. Workers in this new center mostly control the computers pull samples for quality control, and troubleshoot any issues with the machines. We don't like to stop. So um, basically, if there's anything that goes on during the day, we're meant to clean out the problems fast, efficiently, and get them going so the line never stops. Workers can program the machine to pop out different sized dough balls for small, medium, or large pizzas. And I just changed that tube out to give us a little bit smaller dough ball. And then robots place the dough balls onto trays. That's another update, as this used to be done by hand. Nine years ago, there was team members that were placing that. So just imagine how hard that was on our team members. This has made it a lot less physical, and we're able to attract a lot more talent. A set of cameras make sure the dough balls don't stick together. It's literally taking micro like pictures of it. If it catches any mistakes with our placing, this right here will reject each tray. This machine applies a label to each tray. To identify what kind of dough it was and when it was made. Behold the spiral chiller. About 3,000 feet of conveyor belts can cool 40,000 trays of dough at once. There isn't a cooler bigger than the one that you see behind me. We're able to hold two days worth of production, and that gives us the ability to have dough in case of we need to support other supply chain centers. They don't want to freeze it because then it would stop the dough from proofing, or the rising that happens when yeast is activated. So they chill it down to 38 degrees to slow the proofing process. It's very cold in here. Our trays go up for 30 minutes and they come down for 30 minutes. The dough used to take four hours to cool. Now with the spiral chiller, it takes just one. The dough balls travel down another conveyor belt. Then sensors tell these robots to stack them 25 trays high. A much faster process than the original way of doing it. 
The machine also slides a dolly cart under each stack to easily move them. This is the end of the line. We double check that each tray has a label. Then you push it. Here, six different kinds of dough. Handmade pan, hand-tossed extra large, large, medium, small, and wheat for school lunches await orders from franchises. And they have to move fast to prepare for the biggest pizza holiday, the Super Bowl. We normally see a 30% increase. So normally we go from producing half a million uh, dough balls to 750,000 dough balls a week. Noe says with all this automation, the center was able to cut hours off its dough making time. And this production process requires fewer employees, an important feature of the new facility. Because less than a year into the pandemic, Domino's came face to face with a labor crisis gripping the entire food industry. By early 2021, the U.S. restaurant industry was down 1.2 million workers. And there were lots of reasons why. Some workers retired, some quit, some trained for jobs in other sectors, and some relied on unemployment benefits. Employees left warehouse and delivery jobs at record rates. Domino's in particular was having a hard time fulfilling these roles that are not super high paying and are pretty strenuous to work. Warehouse conditions can be tough. In the summertime, this uh, dry, dry warehouse area, it can get super hot. Um, we do have fans and we have other things to keep people cool uh, and hydrated, but it can get super hot. That's where they keep the pizza sauce, dipping cups, barbecue sauce, pizza boxes, and the world's most controversial topping. Pineapple, um, for all those pineapple pizza lovers. The one area that we're looking into right here is our freezer, which is below zero in temperature. This freezer stores the cheese, all the meat toppings and chicken wings. The veggie freezer holds just that, mushrooms, onions and peppers, and a cooler stores the pepperoni. Staffing has been a, a real challenge across, again, the whole industry. So it's this kind of vicious cycle. When you can't hire enough people, it creates a lot of different problems throughout the business. So here in Indiana, Domino's implemented new processes to make warehouse and delivery jobs easier on employees' bodies. At older centers, goods would be bulk loaded onto trucks. So when drivers got to franchises, they had a mini grocery store and would pick out ingredients from each shop. But at the new centers, Domino's has added a whole picking team. They grab all the ingredients and load them into cages. Each store gets its own cage. Which is just efficient and faster and easier. The wheels on these carts make it so smooth to go in and out. So when the drivers pull up, the pre-picked loads are waiting for them. This is where we do stage all of our product for loading. Workers move all the rolling cages and dough dollies onto 48-foot refrigerated trucks. We come in and we place the carts in from left to right, just into the truck. We'll strap it every five rows or so to give it a support brace to hold everything in tight. We're heavily strapped in. It goes a long way to get the pizza to you. On average, 13 stores worth of goods can fit in just one truck. We do a lot of things that are kind of like Tetris here. The center dispatches about 28 trailers. They supply over 300 stores across five states. Domino's wanted the new center to take the load off older supply chain centers. All those centers were over capacity. Most drivers are dispatched overnight to avoid traffic and crowded parking lots. We're actually just left the center. We're heading out to uh, one of the franchisee stores, going to make their delivery. Uh, my wife laughs at me every time because when I go to Parallel Park, my car, she's like, why are you putting up so much? I'm like, because I drive the truck more than I drive my car. And, and I got a little bitty car too. <laughs> so you could just imagine how many wide turns I'm doing in my little bitty car. When, when, the, when the coronavirus hit, uh, a lot of people weren't coming out. They got so bad, Domino's launched a program to send employees from anywhere else in the company to driving school. We're arriving now. The store's right here on the left-hand side.
uh, it has a store number, the stop number, so it's very easy to, to know what store is getting what. So these are dough trays. We take the old ones, bring the new ones in, so it's, it's just a cycle. The new picking and caging systems have taken some of the physical stress off truckers. Now everything's pre-picked, so they've, they've really made our job 100% uh, easier and better and safer as well. Our on-time status has is, is, is improved a lot as far as the delays. We're only at a store 15 minutes versus an hour. So was all of Domino's investment in new tech worth it? Fast food correspondent Kate Taylor says yes. It is working, kind of. All of these solutions they found are working pretty well. And at this point, the labor shortage is kind of abetting a little bit. And Domino's has held on to its title of the biggest pizza chain in the world. It's nearly doubled its global store count in the last decade and passed Pizza Hut in sales in 2018. Domino's was basically able to steal a bunch of Pizza Hut customers. But what does all this automation mean for the future of human jobs in fast food? Automation is no longer an if, it's a when for fast food. There's definitely money to be made in using robots instead of humans. And Domino's is not alone. White Castle already uses robots on some fry stations, and Jack in the Box is soon to follow. Robots are popping up in some KFCs and are set to start cooking chicken. And McDonald's is testing AI to take drive through orders. Domino's itself has trialed self-driving cars to deliver pizza. If there is a robot that can do something for a lower price point than hiring people to do it, companies are gonna jump on that. Which leads to the age-old concern. Could robots take people's jobs? I personally don't think automating is an evil move. I think it's a bit more nuanced than that. Kate says some of the lost jobs are actually okay to lose. Stacking boxes again and again and again, it can lead to injuries. Automating jobs that are repetitive, that are dangerous for workers, that are even just straight boring. That allows people to have the opportunity to have better jobs at a company. And I think that that's also something that shouldn't be villainized. What hasn't become robotic is Domino's in-store experience. You can't automate everything. Making the pizza will stay human. The company does have that hand-tossed slogan to live up to. Pizza chefs pull the proof dough out of the fridge and still make every pie by hand. We're gonna start with some fresh dough. Pull it out there, stick it in the cornmeal. You wanna make sure you make a pencil rim. Reduces the air in the dough. Jessica ladles on a thin layer of tomato sauce. Next, you move on to the cheesing phase. You wanna, you wanna make sure you stay away from the middle. It all even amounts. She so drops on about 40 slices of pepperoni for a large pizza. It goes through the oven, takes about six and a half minutes, and then it'll come out on the other side. A squeeze of garlic oil on the crust finishes off the pie. And then you close the box. And it's all complete. But just because there aren't any robots tossing pizza doesn't mean there isn't a hustle. Ready, set, go! Jessica. It's important to go fast, I think, um, for the customer aspect, because when they're placing an order, um, they're hungry. You know, every pizza is a rush. Fastest pizza I've ever made is a large pepperoni in 25 seconds. It's all hands on deck. Super Bowl is one of the, you know, top three busiest days for Domino's Pizza. And uh, before you ask, 59% of customers are going to order pepperoni. And stores like this one haven't been spared from the worst of the labor crunch. Now, there are challenges with staffing, uh, retention. There is the competition of, you know, all those other uh, delivery businesses that want to take our drivers. At the very end of the process, the hot pies finally head out for delivery. Today, still by humans in fleets of electric cars. But maybe tomorrow? in driverless ones. We're going to keep trucking the product to, to our customers and get it done.
my favorite pizza happens to be the chicken alfredo right now, but uh, it, next week it might change. It's anything that has jalapenos. Uh, plain Jade, I like pepperoni sausage. Yes, I would put triple pineapple on my pizza. I, I love it, I mean, hey look, I mean you could just tell, I'm not lying. <laughs>